Hi, ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson and I wanna give an updated version of the online banking software that I do. I used My Kids Bank for a long time, but the last couple of years I've been using a website called Paygrade and I wanna show you how to set up Paygrade with your students and how I set up some of the bills and their fines and their jobs and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing you're probably gonna to wanna to do is add your students on to Paygrade. And so what I like to do, so I don't have to add them individually, is kind of do a bulk add with add upload student C. CSV. CSV is a comma separated value list. Real easy to create one of those so you don't have to just type it out right here. I created a Google form where I asked them what their password, they want their password to be as well as put their first and their last name. And we are a Google Apps for Education School so I make sure to check off collect email addresses because I plan on their email addresses being their username. And I collect the email addresses so that way they don't have to type it in and then possibly put in a typo. And so what they see is something along like this when they're logged in it shows that they're already logged in with that account and then what do you want your password first and last name click submit and then it's going to create a spreadsheet and create a spreadsheet that looks something like this has a timestamp email password and name you don't need this timestamp column and so I would right click on it and delete that column so all you need is the email, the password, and the name. And so what you wanna do is go to file and you want to download it as a comma separated value, CSV, and it'll download this information, put it wherever you want. Then you'll open up the CSV and then actually just paste it in here and it'll look something like this stuff right here and click upload and it'll add all of, their stu all of your students with their username, their email as their username, their password, and their name. Something I do in case they forget their password is I have them open up their planners to their birthdays and then write down pay grade username and put their email and then pay grade password and then put whatever password that they picked. I have it put it on their birthday so that way everyone's password's not on the same page um, in their planners and that they can easily find it uh, and but won't know maybe where someone else wrote their username and password in their planner. After that, you wanna set up your jobs and so you go to classroom setup and then go to jobs. The only one that will be in there already is gonna be banker. You'll notice that it's got this like underscore banker thing and that's because the banker has to have special privileges and so that's already programmed into this role. You can change what this says as far as the responsibilities of your banker, but they will be able to deposit and withdraw money from people's accounts. And so if you wanna edit something that's already there, just click on this edit button and then go ahead and say what the uh, responsibilities are and it'll list them out afterwards. Something as far as the hourly pay. It's written in hourly pay, but with my class, I like them getting paid once a month. And so you kind of have to figure out if they get paid $1,600 once a month, how much is that gonna be hourly? And so it's based on 174 hours in one month. And so you can just use a calculator, 1600 divided by 174. So $9 and about 20 cents. And so if I wanted that, I would do 920. And then you can see it's a little bit more than 1,600 a month, but it shows you what they would get paid if they got paid monthly. And so that's what it ends up being. So it's not exact, but it's the, the closest you can get just by dividing or dividing your monthly amount by 174. So to create a new job, you would just do the same thing, create the new job. You would say the name, do the hourly pay, and then go ahead and put in your requirements. Up here, you can decide when they get paid, whether they're gonna get paid daily, weekly, bi-monthly, or bi-weekly or monthly. I have mine set for monthly, and you can say what day of the month you want the money to go in. I always put it on the first of the month, and so it'll start up on the first of the month. One thing to keep in mind, if you hire students in the middle of the month, they won't get the entire month's pay on the payday that they get on the first of the month. And so I talk to students about that. I'm like, well, you weren't working the entire month. I hired you guys in the middle of the month. And so this upcoming month will be the first month that you get the full amount of pay. As far as bills, you can go to classroom setup and then go to bills. And then you can create whatever bill you want. If you want to do debt rent or desk, is a thousand dollars a month in my class and it's recurring every month uh, on the first of each month and so i have payday and rent coming out on the first of the month and then you can go to create 
Instead of actually make sure that your students are getting their bills, you can go to teacher function and mass apply the student bill. And then you would pick the bill that you want, rent on desk, 800. And if it's all the students, just select all of them and then click on apply. The way I do fines is in the classroom setup student actions. In this demo account, you see that there's bonus money and fines written in the student's actions. I only do the fines and then when students log in, which I can show you in just a little bit, they can only pick the fines that actually be withdrawn from their account. If you do bonus money or extra things like this, the students will have the chance to go ahead and add that. You can go to the news log and see what students have done that day, but if you don't check the news log daily, then the, there might be students that are adding these this money to their accounts, um, even though maybe they shouldn't be adding it to their accounts. But it just depends on you. That option is available. If you want to create one, you just go ahead and write the name of the fine, maybe it's $50 missing homework fine, and then just say it is a withdrawal. Um, if you are are going to do bonus money within the student action editor where students can actually add it themselves. Uh, you can just say homework completed and then 50 and say it's a deposit instead. And then you click create and give you a quick look at what it looks like from the student perspective. If I go to overview and then I go down to one of the students, click on this little key and you can see what is going on from the student's perspective and what they see when they log in. You see their current jobs. If they've got more than one, they can click right there and it'll list the jobs right there and their requirements and the fines that they have to pay is under these actions and so if it's an infraction they would say okay messy desk area and apply that and then say yes they want to do that if it is a bonus money that they are adding on their own it's the same thing it's there and it is homework and they can apply that if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see all of their transactions. So you can see withdrawals, deposits, and current balance, as well as the current balance in the checking and savings and credit card accounts, which I'll just talk about in a second. So back to the teacher review. So outside of paychecks and bonus money and fines, if you want to put money in someone's account or put money in multiple students' account, you do have this mass apply student actions, and there is an opportunity for a custom action. Right when I hire them, I give everyone a signing bonus in my case of $200 you can make whatever you want and then select all students or just the students that you want to give it to and click apply so a couple things as far as the different bank settings you can have students have savings and checkings as well as wires and checks and credit. Um, if you want all of all five of them, you can click right there. Um, general ideas, you can change the APRs for the checkings and the savings. Um, the way I explain this to my students, I say if you had $100 in your savings account and you kept it in there for a year and you didn't add anything, after a year, you would have $103. So not the greatest gains, uh, but a little bit more than what you would find into checking and those gains will be bigger if you have more money in there. Um, as far as the credit card, I haven't tried the credit card out just yet in my class, um, but I'm thinking about incorporating it. It is basically if they go into debt, they have now put that money on the credit card and this is the interest rate that begins to work against them. Um, so incentivizing them to get out of debt as quickly as possible. And so I'm thinking about trying that out soon. As far as the checks and the wire, Wires are a way that students can send money to one another. The thing with wires is you can actually set up a wiring fee, which is under the miscellaneous here. You can kind of see a wiring fee right here. If you want it to be a $50 fee every time they wire money, um, you can do that or you can just set it to zero if you want. Let's go back to the bank settings. As far as checks, checks are a little bit different. You, students can send checks to one another, virtual checks to one another, and there are no fees. So just like in real life, wiring sometimes has fees, whereas checks do not have fees. Checks just take a little bit more time because you have to have the students sign the check by writing their name, typing their name in, and then you have to have your banker approve the check. And so basically two steps before the money actually gets from one student's account to another. If we wanna see what that actually looks like from the student perspective, if you go to overview, you can scroll down here. Let's say John, I'm gonna click on the key for John to go into John's perspective. Um, let's, he's got the wire funds and the write a check option. So if he's gonna wire funds, Let's say he's gonna wire $200 for an art piece that his friend made for his business. Maybe Mikey has an art business, he's gonna wire the funds. Now it says, do 
do you want to also pay with the $50 wiring fee if you do this? And so it's gonna be $250, uh, $200 goes to John, but the $50 fee goes to the bank. And so if you click yes, you can see when he scrolls down, he's got two transactions down here. He's got the $200 that went to Mikey, and then he's got the $50 wiring fee that was also withdrawn, and this is his current balance. As far as checks, let's say if we did this as a check, let's do a $250 check for some cookies. Someone else owns a cookie business. Let's say that Josiah owns a cookie business. Let's mail that check. Are you sure you want to send a check to two, for 250 bucks? Let's go back to, let's go to Josiah's perspective. So Josiah's gonna have a notification up here. You see this little bell. It says you have checks waiting to be signed and let's go ahead and sign it for cookies, Josiah send it to the bank and we'll need to go back and look at a banker perspective. So let's see who is a banker and Banning's a banker. So I'm going to click on that key and there's a notification up here that you've got some checks that need to be deposited and you can see that it's from John to Josiah and we can click accept. And that is what it takes for the check to finally go in. And the reason I don't really do checks is because I don't want to, do those two steps um, and have the banker having to go in there and keeping track that those checks are going through. So I really just keep things at a wiring fee of zero just to make it a little bit easier on myself and my students. A couple other options I like to note is under classroom setup under miscellaneous, in addition to the wiring fee spot, I like to hide the leaderboard as well as the news log from the students, uh, mainly because I don't want them to see who has the most money or who has the least money or how much people have. And I had the news log as well, so that way they can't see who's paying who for what, because uh, it's not really any of their business. Um, so I usually just reserve that for myself. And lastly, let's take a look at how bankers can actually deposit money. So Banyan here is a banker, so I'm gonna go into his account. Since I signed a banker, he's got this little banker overview option at the top that nobody else has. And let's say I wanna give bonus money to Jason. I'm gonna go all the way to the right on Jason's account where that transaction column is and click on that little link there. And I can deposit it if I've already got them programmed in there with the actions, but I just type it here under custom action um, and say two, $300, whatever the bonus money is, and then I click apply, and then you can see, okay, this is the bonus money that was deposited and that student's new balance. And so that's how I have set up PayGrade. Let me know if you are trying something a little bit different or using other features of the platform that could help me out um, that I haven't done before because I'm always looking to learn what other teachers are doing as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.